All right then, so far we've added a few different widgets to our app inside this scaffold widget right here, and it's looking all right, but it still all uses the default material design styles. So this is the default material design blue, uh, the default font, the default font size, etc. It would be nice to be able to customize this a little bit. So we're gonna look at some different colors and font styles in this tutorial. So first of all, let's look at the app bar. What we're gonna do is add a property to this app bar called background color. So let me do that, background color. Now the value of this is gonna be a material design color. And we have access to the whole material design palette, which is something like this over here. I'm on the material design website right here. And we can see we have a huge palette of different colors. So we've got blues, purples, greens, yellows, and they all have different shades as well. So we have access to all of these different colors inside our Flutter apps. So let's try using them. The way we use them is we tap in to the colors with a capital C, and then we say dots, and then we can choose from any of these different things here. Now each different color has different strengths as well. So for example, I could say something like red right here, and then if I wanted to, I could give this a different strength. So this is the default strength of the red, but if I now press Control Q while this is selected, I can scroll down and see if we add square brackets at the end of this, then we can choose one of these different strengths of red. So if I want it slightly deeper, I could use this one, for example, red and then 600. So let me now choose red first of all, then in square brackets, I'm gonna add in 600, and that gets me that color we just saw. So now if I was to save this, and come down here to run and hot restart, then we should see this turn red, awesome. Okay, so let's now go down to the floating action button. And by the way, you'll notice this is kind of highlighted. That's Flutter telling us that something's not quite right here. So if we hover over it, we can see the parameter on pressed is actually required. And that's because this is a button and buttons are there to be pressed and we need to add this in. So I'll add it in quickly now, um, but we'll come back to it again later on. On pressed is just a property, which is gonna be a function and it's an anonymous function. We don't need to give this a name and something is gonna happen in here later on if we press this button. Again, we'll talk about this a bit later on. I just wanted to add that property in so that Flutter stops shouting at me regarding this widget. Okay, so let's also add a background color for this thing right here. So if we come down here, we can say background color. And again, I'm gonna give this a colors property, then choose red again and 600 again. You can choose whatever you want. I'm trying to keep things consistent right here. So let me save it. And if we hot restart, we can see hopefully now that this is gonna go red. All right, cool. So now let's turn our attention to this little bit of text in the middle, because at the minute it's a bit small. I'm not so keen on the font family and maybe wanna make it bold, give it a color as well. So let's go to this text. So at the minute, this text widget right here just accepts a single string. But if we want it to accept different properties as well, then what I'm gonna do is cut this string and go into a new line, open up the widget, much like we have opened up other widgets where we add properties. And the first thing we add in is the actual text string. So I'm just gonna add this back in, hello ninjas. And then the second property can be something called a style property. Now this style property is gonna ultimately allow us to style this text in different ways. And we need a widget to do this. And this widget is called a text style widget like so. So we have the actual text and then a style property called text style. Now inside this widget, we can pass different properties to style our text. And there's loads of different properties we can use. Now to find out the properties, you could go to the documentation or if you select one of these, if you just put your cursor on it and then press control Q, you can see all of the different properties we can use. So for example, we can use background color, which must be a color, a font size, which must be a double. Uh, we also have a font style, font weight, height, etc. So there's loads of different properties that we can use inside this textile to style this text. So I'm gonna start with a font size, and this is just gonna be 20. So if I save this and preview by pressing this button, then we should see that this increases in font size, awesome. Now let's do the font weight, 
and we don't just say something like bold or something like that. These font weights, they're all built in to the Flutter SDK, the Flutter library. So what I'm gonna do is say font weight, and that's the font weight object or font weight class, and then use the bold property. So a lot of the times we use something like this. If we're doing font weight, not phony weight, font weight, then we use the font weight object. If we're doing something like a color, then we use the colors object like this. All right, so the font weight is now gonna be bold. Now, before we preview, I'm also gonna add in another couple of properties. The next one is gonna be letter spacing, and that is gonna be two. And then after that, I'll also do a color, and this is gonna be colors, and then we're gonna call this gray, and do a shade of 600. So if I save this now and then hot restart, this should take shape. Okay, looking a bit better. Now we can also add in different font families. So this at the minute is the default font family, but what I want to do is add in a custom font. So the first thing to do is actually get that custom font and add it into our project. So I'm gonna open up my browser and I've already gone to the Google Fonts website. It's just fonts.google.com and I'm gonna choose a custom font that I can use in this project. Now, I'm just gonna search for this because I know what it's called. It's called Indie Flower, and I'll grab this one right here. So I'll press the plus icon and then open this up, and I wanna click on this icon at the top right to download it. So I'm gonna save the file, and once it's saved, I'll open this up, and I'm gonna extract this, first of all, extract all to the same location, and then we see this font right here. Now what I'm gonna do is drag this font into my project. But before I do that, I need to make a folder to put it in. So in the root directory, my app, right click, and then we're gonna create a new folder. So go to new and then go to directory. And I'm just gonna call this fonts. And then I'll open up this thing again, and I'm gonna grab this, and I'm gonna place it into fonts, okay? And then what we need to do is tell Flutter that we have this font ready to use. Now, the way we do that, the way we add these different assets and fonts and things is by going to this pubspec.yaml file. Now, this file is a bit like a configuration file for our project. It's where we can specify the environment, dependencies, or any assets and fonts that we want to use in our project as well. Now, the format of this is very, very important. Notice we have these different properties that are flush up against the left, and then when we use a sub property inside that, it's two spaces indented. If it's not, then it won't work, so it has to follow that format. So be careful you don't do three spaces or something else. So if you scroll down, you're gonna find a place where we can add fonts like this. Now it's all commented out at the minute, so I'm gonna highlight all of this all of the fonts, and then I'm gonna press Control on Windows, think Command on a Mac, and forward slash to uncomment that. Notice it's not quite flush yet, so I'm just gonna grab all of this again, and I'm gonna zoom it back two, and then zoom it forward one. So now it is in alignment with the rest. So you can see we have this fonts option right here, and underneath we define a family. Now this is a name that we give to this font family, and then we define where those assets actually are. So we just have one font asset right here. So what we need to do is actually delete most of these things and just leave one asset right there. And I'm going to name this one instead Indie Flower. So that's the name I'm giving to this font. I can call it whatever I want, but it makes sense because that's what it's called. And then I need to give a path to this font. Now it's still in the fonts folder, but this time it's called something different. It's called indie flower and then hyphen regular.ttf. So now we've added this font inside our pubspec file. So all I have to do is save this and then I'm gonna go back to main.dart. Now notice I get this notification pubspec has been edited. So we can click this to get any dependencies that we need now. So let me now minimize that. And now we can use this font by referring to this font name right here. So inside the text style widget, I'm now gonna add on another property. And that property is gonna be font family. Now I'm gonna say indie flower, which is what I called the font inside 
pub spec right here. If I called it something different, I'd refer to that. And then this should work. So if I save it now, I'm gonna close off that folder and then I'm gonna go to hot restart and hopefully we'll see the new font over here. Hello Ninjas, awesome. So then my friends, that's a bit more about colors and a bit more about font styles in Flutter. But at the minute, there's one thing bugging me, and that is that every time we save the file and we make a change and we want to see that change in the screen over here, we have to come down here to the run panel and then press this hot restart button. And only then can we see that change. So I'm going to address that issue in the next video so that as we save our code, it automatically updates on the right and we don't have to keep pressing this thing over here.